Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. We are again at GTC 2015. Now one of NVIDIA's focuses for this conference is deep learning. Deep learning. And that's probably something that a lot of our readers don't really understand what it is, but they might have, uh, their ears might have perked up some when they found out about NVIDIA building a quad GTX Dead Titan box. X uh, box system, Digit box. the Digits Dev Box. Digit Dev box. So we thought maybe we'd come talk to Tom and Luke. Luke about what it actually is, what deep learning is, and yes. then how this has actually accelerated through uh, so many GPUs. Well, let's go through it. But first of all, Luke, what do you do here at NVIDIA? I am a software engineer. I'm the lead developer on Digits, which is this sort of an SDK for neural networks that we've been working on. Well, lead developer, there you go. We got the, we got, we've got the guy in charge. Luke is going to correct anything I say that is stupid. So often. 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 Yeah, okay, right. so let me first explain what is deep learning and yes. how does it work, okay? So there's a thing in uh, computer science and in biology in general that is called a neural network. And a neural network is modeled loosely on the brain. And the idea is that you have a collection of nodes that are in a topology, that are interconnected, and you apply an image or uh, uh, apply a, a pattern that you're trying to recognize to the front of that, it stimulates through all these little nodes and then it makes an answer at the end. And what you do as you train it is you apply multiple patterns that are pre-classified that you know the answer to and then you look at, you know, I applied a pattern, it rippled all the way through the network, it said that, you know, these five random numbers are the answer. Now the five random numbers when we start are complete garbage, so what we do is we take the correct answer, which might be a particular number or a particular vector, and we say, this is the correct answer, you guessed wrong, and we take that error uh, and we propagate it backwards through the network, adjusting the weights that are interconnecting all the nodes, right? So think of it as an iterative process. You run this millions and millions of times, and sooner or later, every time you apply a pattern, it goes through all those different nodes and all those different weights, and you end up with the right answer. It's freaking magic. Now, the, the, the cool part about this is the topology that you use and the way that the, the nodes are interconnected is a dramatically important part of how effective a network is. So that's what data scientists are doing. Data scientists are looking at data sets, they're adjusting their networks, and they're, they're trying to optimize in terms of how easy is it to train and how generically does it solve problems, right? Okay. So it's pretty cool. So, what so how does this apply here? Yeah. All right, what Digits does is it's actually a user interface that makes it easy for data scientists to access data sets, to develop and structure um, uh, networks, and to then also train, and then to evaluate how effective those are. So it's kind of a, a turnkey solution for data scientists for deep learning. Okay, how's that? All right. Is that pretty close? Yeah, it's great. Seem accurate? Close. Okay. All right. All right. So one we we'll can, accept that. We will show you how Digits works, okay? So let's start by getting a data set. Now, a data set, remember, is a collection of, you know, thousands and thousands and millions of images. And we're going to go ahead and use a very common data set, which is used by the Postal Service for handwriting recognition. So can we pull up that, Luke, and just take a look at the image set? Uh, let me just... Okay, so we're gonna find a folder. What we've already done is loaded the data set, and uh, it's been kind of crunched into a format that's easy for, for these deep learning frameworks to access. So we're gonna go ahead and, I think if you just click on it. it will, go look at one yeah, let's look at, yeah, let's look at that one. Okay, and then let's just open up the directory so we can look at the image. Yeah, we wanna look at the, the folder of the images. There you go. All right, so this is a great example. So again, it's the, uh, what does that stand for, MN? Inst. Uh, I don't remember. Okay, this is MNIST. It's from National Institute of Standards and Technology. Thank you, Robert. National Institute of Standards and Technologies. That sounds very official. And so this is the <laughs> data set that the post office uses for handwriting recognition. Let's look at fives or fours or whatever you want to get. So there are 60,000 different handwriting samples of fives. But we know the answer. Every one of these images is a five. Right. Okay, so when we learn, when we apply these to the network, we're gonna say, hey network, here's a five. And it's gonna say, no, that's a three and a two and a one and a zero. And then we're gonna say, no, it's a five. And we're gonna adjust the, the network's weightings so the next time it gets a better answer. Okay. So the more, the more data you give it initially, the better it learns, the more accurate it will be in the long run, right? Yes. And there's a trade-off. Um, if you give it, uh, uh, you know, depending on the network topology, it might be able to recognize exactly the images you give it. 
But the problem is you don't really want to recognize the images you give it. You want to recognize something it hasn't seen. Right. Right. So there's a balance between, you know, how do you constrain the network so that it will eventually generalize. Okay. 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 Let's go ahead and show how this works. So we've got a data set. Um, the next thing we need is a, uh, a network. Okay. So let's go show how a network works. Uh, and similar to the data set, it's a one-clicky thing. We've already got a couple networks that are, are already set up, right? You're going to look up on this train, or you want to create one? Uh, let, let's go ahead and create a network right. using a standard uh, model. Sure. Okay, so what Luke is doing is he's pulling up kind of these predetermined networks, one that's called MNINST. So this is actually the data set that we've created already. Okay, so the we data select set. select which images do we want to use to train the network, and then which Im images are we going to use to validate the network and show that it's actually working. Now, where right. did we define the topology of the network? So we're about to do that. Okay, great. So first, you select your data set, say what's the data that we're going to run on, and then the next step is to say what's the structure of this neural network okay. that we want to use. Well, let's right? do that. So we'll use Lynette, which is sort of a classical algorithm for doing uh, image recognition. Um, and if you want, you can see how it's actually structured, um, which is a little cryptic. So we try to have some tools. Um, to help you figure out what this all means. Like, is that just JSON data? It's a prototext. Wow. It's, a pro it's a protocol buffer defined by Google. Um, and this is specifically defined by CAFE, which is the back-end framework that we're using to train these networks. So what this defines is a network that's structured like this. So you have your data coming in that's labeled. And it runs through some convolutional layers. And then it runs through some sort of uh, fully connected layers that are called inner product here and then it'll give you your result, give you the best guess for what, what this data was. Right? So think of it as the, the, what this file, can you go back to the top? So what this file tells you is I have a very particular structure of nodes, and those nodes are first uh, structured as a convolutional network, which is sort of a, a localized classifier, and then there's a pooling layer, which is actually going to force some uh, abstractions. It's going to reduce the amount of data that goes to the next level and amplify significant uh, sort of features of the data set. And it just continues, a different convolution, and then eventually ends up with a fully interconnected uh, network that allows for sort of like uh, extraction of interconnected features. So it's, a, okay. it's like a magical science. So that's, the, that's our data uh, for the network. Now let's go ahead and do some training. So let's select Lynette, and we'll leave all the other things defaults. Um, if you know what you're doing, you can make changes there, but let's just leave it as the defaults for now. And we'll give it a name and start it off. Okay, it's called test. Right. Nice name. Thank you very much. Excellent, excellent job. Okay, so what, what are we looking at there on the, on the right? So as it trains, it's going to tell you um, how long it expects to finish. And it'll take just a second to get started. Um, and so when oh, you say here we go. training, what, is, what does this actually mean? What's, what's happening? Um, well, hold on. I goofed. I chose uh, images of the wrong size. Let me go back real quick. Okay. All right. So let's do this again. So we're going to select the MNIST data set that is the correct size. Ah. Uh, and it's going to run quicker? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. And now we'll run on that. Um, so as it trains, it's going to be spitting out this graph. Oh, that's cool. Right, and this graph basically tells us whether it's working or not. So the blue line is the accuracy, and you should see that going up over time, obviously. That means how many images in the validation set is it correctly predicting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then for the machine learning guys out there, they'll understand that the loss means um, that's sort of a, a uh, metric of how well your function is fitting. Okay. the data, right? Okay. And so you should see that go down, right? right. The right. loss is something you want to see go down, the accuracy goes up, right. so we can tell that this is working. And epochs means how many times have we applied the full data set? Exactly. Okay. That's right. See that use of epoch? It's good. It's yeah. a good term. It's a, it's, it's a good SAT yeah. word. I yeah. like it. Yeah. So effectively, we're 71% done running the number of epochs that we predefined, and the error rate is now very, very close to 100, right? And, and I would say success rate. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. The success rate is close to 100. Now, the interesting thing is that doesn't mean it can, like, 100% predict everything of all kinds. It means that based on the training set, it correctly identifies near 100% of the applied training set. Gotcha. And the idea is that if you're very good on the training set, you should be very good on a, on a random number, right? So let's go ahead and show uh, what the answer is. All right. So, so once you've trained your neural network, you can come through and actually test it with a specific image. Um, so we'll come in here and test with this five looks pretty good. So let's make sure it can get that correct. 
Uh, this is an image that we did not train, right? That's right. So this is a different image. So this, this up here is the actual image we're testing, and this is the output of the neural network. It's saying, hey, it's 100%, that is a five, right? So, and it said maybe it's a three, maybe it's a two, almost 0%. It knows it's a five, which is awesome because it means we predicted, predicted correctly. Now tell us a little bit about activations and weights. What are we looking at? Right, so this is giving you a visual representation of what's going on in the hidden layers in the network. Um, so uh, when you feed this five through, um, it's going to activate different like convolutional filters in the network, and this will tell you, you know, some of these filters have learned different things. Um, so the weights are, uh, well, they're the weights in the network, and the activations are um, what the, the data that's actually layer, going right? through. So the way I think that's about right. activations is it's the output of the Convy One network, that's right. and the activations are actually fed into the pool. And then if you look at the pool outputs, it's like a shrunken down version of the activations. By shrinking it down, we actually force subsequent network layers to abstract. Right? You're you're saying don't recognize just fives. So that's why at the bottom of the is at the bottom of the network up, up here in Conv1. It, you can actually still recognize it as, as, a five. as a five, but as you go down through the different layers, yeah, it, becomes it becomes more, more, and more abstract, abstract, right? And then what's interesting is it's becoming more and more abstract. You really can't get a direct semantic connection between a five or any number and that, and that value, right? But where's the output? Can we go all the way down to the bottom? Sure, so the output is just 10 little neurons mm -hmm. that say, is it a zero, is it a one, is it a two, and so forth. Um, and up here, this tells us, you know, which one was actually turned on, um, and the five neuron was turned on all the way, essentially. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so let's summarize. Digits is a uh, user interface on top of popular frameworks that are used for training deep learning, right? And all of them implement some form of neural network. And neural networks are now used on almost every major application. You can think of speech recognition, image recognition, um, real-time translation. It can be even used for things like Amazon's recommendations and Newegg's recommendations. Auto driving, we showed the auto demo. It's uh, deep learning and training of neural networks is a tremendous opportunity uh, for all of us. So at what point are you using the GPUs in there? That is during the actual training right. process itself, right? right? During training is when GPUs hold hold all the data, and you compare all the data sets, it's a massive problem that is dramatically accelerated by GPUs. That's pretty cool. So this is the this is the Digits dev box. This is not a consumer-oriented product, right? No, no. For developers or scientific, uh, you know, applications Absolutely. that were there trying to prototype and develop Absolutely. applications and in this method. Wants, uh, information on the Digits dev box, just Google it, say Digits dev box, you'll come to a landing page. We have a ton of information. Uh, you can also get more information about Digits. This whole package ships turnkey, uh, trying to accelerate uh, deep learning scientists worldwide. Very cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks.